So, um, okay, so Marion, would you like um, just to give us a bit of background in terms of how you actually became an entrepreneur? Okay, well, I first went self employed on the 1st of January 2000, okay, quite a long time ago now, um, and I was working as a national council manager for Bustle Hotels. And my territory was Birmingham to Inverness and Ireland. Wow. Um, and I had the same call targets as the London sales team. We had 26 hotels in London. Um, so I was quite stretched, really. Um, my mum had passed away a couple of years before, and I was just away from home. I'd drive to Aberdeen on a Sunday night, yeah. schlep all the way down the country, and back on a Friday. And I just thought, oh, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, but I used to sell, um, I used to deal with a lot of uh, hotel booking agencies. Yeah. Uh, big and small, and a lot of people were self-employed, and I thought I can do this all yeah. by myself. Um, so my first business was launched as a hotel online booking agent okay. in 2000. Um, and after a couple of years um, of being confident from my own business, I had fully staff, decided that I would follow my dream of uh, going into retail. Um, so I opened a shop on three floors, and I moved the hotel booking agency to the top floor, yeah. and my sister looked after it. Um, I managed it as the shop got busier and yeah. took over. Um, and then obviously uh, online happened, so I was one of the first uh, sellers on eBay mm -hmm. with lots of lines of stock. Yeah. Um, and when I had my daughter quite a few years later in 2004, um, I decided to close the shop. Mm -hmm. It was quite quiet, a lot of shops had closed around me, and I went solely online okay. and created a living for myself working for the seller and the dining room. Um, so that's where all my retail mm -hmm. business developed and then over between 2004 and 2010 I turned it from that 80,000 um, turnover a year to just under a million in 2010 and I had big showrooms and I was importing from China about 40 containers a year um, one of the first resellers mm -hmm. of Brat and Garber furniture that you now see in Next um, so very very busy doing yeah. that and as I was going through my divorce in 2010 um, I had major problem with uh, the factories in China and it's usually a story best told over a bottle of wine yeah. <laughs> but my supply went to other retailers, larger retailers, okay. uh, next being one of them and uh, I sent the economy to liquidation in 2010 um, and then thought wow <laughs> what do I do now mm. um, and it took me about six months really to make a decision to that I'd grown a business myself from yeah. you know purely on my own from that kind of level up to you know having employing eight staff and yeah. being able to achieve for myself that I would uh, then support other small businesses in that process yeah. really. and branching out was born yeah. um, which will be three years old in mm -hmm. April so that's kind of been my journey so was there any relevance to the first of January 2000 because that seems I think going into 2000 for a lot of people was quite relevant but to open a business on the first of January was there any relevance to Yeah, that? I think okay. so. I'd been planning it for about six months and mm -hmm. I decided that I was finishing um, at Christmas. It was yeah. kind of from the Christmas switch off. Um, I'd already got my offices, which I renovated, mm -hmm. and um, so I was kind of working on it in the background. Yeah. But it was that whole mini millennium of, yeah. this is going to be it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I never looked back, although several people have told me along the way, with, you know, uh, particularly when personally into a place of, of failure, of, okay. of kind of feeling of failure. Mm -hmm. um, and you can kind of think about, you know, people like Richard Branson, Alan Sugar, mm -hmm. they've all kind of been there, done that. And then when you see some of the larger corporations, you know, like recently Blockbusters and been yeah. and Woolworths, when Woolworths went yeah. around the same time as I did actually. In fact, it was just after. And I thought, oh, it made me feel a little bit bad. So Woolworths is all Yeah, it didn't feel so, yeah. so bad then. But I think really, A, I actually believe I'm probably unemployable. Um, because I did apply for a couple of jobs as I was going through okay. um, a divorce and the reality of uh, why would you ever want to work for somebody else when you've worked for 14 years of that time for yeah. myself. Um, and 
and really knowing that I could, I could do it again. Yeah. And I think when I first set up mm -hmm. Ranching Out, it was a little bit in survival mode okay. um, because I had two children, I was living in a rented mm -hmm. house and I knew I had to find a way yeah. to support them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took a bit of processing to work out how I was going to do that. Um, but I knew I could do it if that, you know. Mm. I guess it's used in those circumstances, isn't it? And that drives the energy I've got to make this happen. Yeah. I guess certainly I can resonate with that myself, you know, being in that position where it's thinking, whew, right, you know, single yeah. mum, this crap to happen, totally. there's no other way. Yeah. And I guess being, you know, having an entrepreneur, yeah. you've got that flexibility that you can give yourself. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I went from having no money worries mm -hmm. from, you know, I remember at one point having a safe in the in the uh, showrooms and just thinking what I'm going to do but I just didn't really know how to cope with the level of money to okay. my darkest day was when Bailey was knocked on the door and took the car away mm -hmm. and um, I couldn't get the kids to school the next day. It's just mm -hmm. So what have been then the real successes that you know on that incredible journey you know what do you think have been key things that have allowed you to be successful because obviously I know your business but what do you think has really allowed you to be successful on that journey? I think uh, vision, mm -hmm. belief, yeah. and uh, motivation just that it is going to happen. Total belief that yeah. it will happen and, uh, and I can do this. And, yeah. you know, and, and as you say, when, mm -hmm. when Branching Out was first set up, um, I was purely just really helping with kind of social media. I'd kind of gone quite mm -hmm. safe in what I was doing okay. um, until my confidence rebuilt, yeah. really. And that's when, you know, now. The, the, the business is completely different than, than the business that I developed in the first yeah. place. But that has been about, you know, commitment, drive, mm. and ambition, and also um, wanting to be self-sufficient and support yeah. my children. Okay. And what's the real? You touched on that that you know you want to be able to work with people who've got small businesses. What's your real passion in that then? Why small businesses? <coughs> what is it? Small businesses because nothing gives me a better buzz than punching above the mm -hmm. weight of the big guys. And yeah. don't get me wrong, I do do some corporate work. Um, I worked on Polar mm -hmm. Express attraction last year, but usually through um, PR agencies. So I'm kind of the person that's in the way, building the strategies, yeah. if you like. Um, and I love that because it gives me great experience as well, up to date experience yeah. that then I can pass on to small businesses. But small businesses for me, I just mm -hmm. have, you know, I've always been a small business myself. Yeah. Um, the passion and the drive in the people that I work with yeah. to see them come from a, you know, the journey that they take yeah. in terms of visibility online mm -hmm. and the effect it has for their business gives yeah. me massive, yeah. you know, massive achievement. I just feel a massive sense of pride yeah. and achievement with them. So, um, yeah. And I think that's one of the things that's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I've moved away from doing a, any particular ad hoc work into mm -hmm. more longer term consultancy programs. Okay. Um, where we make a real difference in a business yeah, okay. um, and that can be from the design to the kind of planning and strategy mm -hmm. right through to kind of the reviewing and, and making sure and also making them accountable yeah. uh, to invest in the business to, to make a difference. Okay, yeah, to balance the accounts. Okay. So you talked there about one of the things that you felt has been really successful is having a vision. So what's your vision now going forward? Where do you perceive well, it's, as I say, it's shifted from yeah. kind of ad hoc. I don't do um, social media management or anything like that anymore because okay. I've freed up a lot of time yeah. uh, in the shift. So I do a lot of design work and a lot of processes for email marketing okay. um, and web design mm -hmm. predominantly. Um, and one of my biggest challenges this year, really, and biggest successes is to have identified that I did want to go back into retail. Um, and I think I'd kind of shelved it and put it in a box because I was scared to go back there because probably of the lot the sort of lasting effects of feeling like a failure yeah. um, and coming to the flourish groups actually mm -hmm. uh, gave me the strength to be honest with myself mm -hmm. uh, in the fact that I wanted to do retail again as well and um, but not solely just as part of yeah. my, my longer term dreams and um, so I launched the fairy wish about eight weeks ago which is an interactive um, gift it's a wish from a fairy and inside it has a secret code that is activated online to send an email to the recipient with a, a fairy wish along with all its um, statistics to work from and in January the wedding wish will be launched which is an interactive wedding favour um, which is I'll 
going to play more about that when it's live. Um, but my ultimate, I've actually, I'm going to have um, a holding company which is called the Dandelion Umbrella, um, and that will be personalised um, retail gifts. Um, and, and continuing to work in terms of the web design and the email marketing processes that I work with and my current consultant clients which are amazing mm -hmm. and I'd like some more of yeah. those as well but not too many okay. I want to be able to manage my time. Okay, so in terms of then those people that are going to be drawn to work with you in that consultancy manner, I know that your real thing is you like to work with people in a real rounded way, in a real 360 yeah. way. So who would those people be? Why? Why would they want to come and work with you uniquely to get that? What is it about Miami that makes you a really good fit for that? I think it is the, because I understand the whole process. Because yeah. I don't, you know, I'm not just. Uh, I don't just talk about social media. Yeah. I don't just talk about web design. Mm -hmm. I can. Ha I've kind of walked through the whole journey of yeah. everything. You know, I've got clients that I work with Amazon and eBay and mm -hmm. Etsy stuff and design. I've actually yeah. putting it all together in a 360 degree approach. Um, because that's really important when you deal with online marketing because mm -hmm. it's got to be branded the same. Yeah. Um, you've got to build trust in mm -hmm. terms of where your client is, how they're accessing you online. And lots of clients come to me at all different levels, so I could get somebody yeah. that comes and says, I just want a new website. But actually, when you look into what they can achieve, yeah. um, is just making a, a lot of small business aren't aware of what's out there in terms of processes yeah. and <coughs> what can be achieved. And I have got the knowledge of all that area and yeah. if I don't specialise in a particular area which I don't specialise in some areas yeah. then I'll work with associates and, and pass it out yeah. to them so I have if I can't answer the question then yeah. I have an associate that will be able to, to answer it and I'm quite happy to pass mm -hmm. people to that but um, what I have it sounds like you actually share that knowledge because I guess as a new business you might think well I need a website but not even understand that there's all these other things no. that you perhaps need to do yeah, as well absolutely. so it's been really to be able to impart that isn't it yeah. advice and I know certainly with my business you know, worked in my brand and I thought, oh gosh, this is actually good all graphic as well, that's so wonderful, you know. Yeah. And I think it's about stages yeah. of, of, of taking it in bite-sized pieces mm -hmm. in terms of the journey and, and how you can build a business. It can't yeah. all be done but overnight, we'd all love to wait for it to mm -hmm. one and, and it all be developed. Um, yeah. And I think that's why I enjoy working on longer-term okay. projects. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, what do you think has um, been your biggest success this year? The realisation yes. of letting go of some contracts yes. and business, which was a very difficult mm -hmm. challenge for me, um, because financially I let go of the of some long-term financial projects as well, mm -hmm. um, and just trusting in myself yeah. to be able to do what I love, yeah. and creating a life that I love, and that's what I want to do. So, any questions from you guys? What you might like to ask? Well, before I went on a time management course, I worked 24 7, seven days a week. Um, and from the year 2000, I worked 24 7, seven days a week. Um, I now try and work, um, I'm not going to use the word try, I work <laughs> school hours. Okay. So I work academic hours and um, occasionally, as Debbie would call it, lean, I lean out of those. So if I've got, you know, if I'm at a workshop that takes till five o'clock, then that happens, or the odd evening event. Generally, I work academic hours. Um, although in the in the holidays, I do tend to work a couple of days a week um, when I haven't got the kids either out doing work. I would describe that um, as a like a percentage rule. Mm. So I say I work academic hours 80% of the time. Mm. That where I need to lean into that 20% of the time, I do, and I do it guilt free because I know that that's it's like how I've decided that it's going to be constructive. But 80% of the time, then I would work in those. And just to let's just, just remember mm -hmm. this now. The trigger for that was at the time management course. I had to write. A, Debbie made us write an employment contract to ourselves. So we had a piece of paper, and it was how many hours a week do you want to work? How many weeks a year do you want to work? And what do you want to earn? And it was the first time ever since being self-employed that I thought, what am I worth? I.e., had I stayed in the corporate world that I was in, what kind of salary would I be on now? And then I worked it back, thinking, well, okay, I can kind of not expect that because I'm happier in 
in terms of my work and my life, so I'll let that go a bit. But actually, when I looked at that figure of what I believed I was worth, and I worked it back on an hourly rate, I thought, oh, something's got to change. Um, and and that, it was, that was the sort of pinnacle moment for me of being able to restructure the way, and also to have the permission that I don't have to sit on my computer till midnight every night to feel that I'm busy and working, because I've organised my, you know, there are, last night I was on my computer late, um, because I'm wanting to finish on the 19th for Christmas, yeah. so that's okay for me because I know why I'm yeah. why I'm yeah. putting yeah. in the extra yeah. hours. Yeah. But I was having a difficulty being able to switch off to spend time with the kids or even you know time with my partner in the evening mm -hmm. because I felt like I was just drawn back to work, but I don't. Mm -hmm. so I don't get what's been the benefit to your business then in terms of switching from 24/7 to academic hours? Because that's a big leap, yeah, and obviously lots of terminations will actually make that as yeah. well because obviously I can impart the knowledge but everybody then has to make that decision right and implement it so clearly you can so what's the impact been on your business in terms of switching those hours? Well I've doubled my turnover this year from last year working less hours so um, because I'm more mm. effective in the hours that I'm working yeah. and I've kind of nailed that process of instead of spending hours as for the people that are in the creative world you can spend hours and hours over delivering, mm -hmm. which I was over delivering massively, um, of thinking, well, that's how long this should take me so it can get done. And it's amazing when you put those disciplines in place yeah. that it gets done. Yeah. And there are still occasions, you know, when stuff will, you know, take a bit longer than I anticipated yeah. it to. But the general discipline. Yeah. So it's really able to, that Yeah, well, and, and not feeling the guilt it. that I'm, because I'm not working, I'm not kind of doing mm -hmm. all yeah. you know, that, that I'm entitled to. And what's been the impact to you and your family then? Switching to that, yeah, a good one. Yeah, a good one, and I know particularly the girls in mm -hmm. terms of being able to go off and do things yeah. with them. Yeah, and you think we have the dogs out in the kitchen? Yeah, we have. We do yeah. our eight o'clock dance around with the motivational <laughs> music on, and the dog joins in <laughs> um, and just sets the tone. And, and yeah. been a big impact for them actually, so mm -hmm. that mum can have some fun instead of just working all the time. Yeah, I think there was one point um, previous to it all where. My youngest daughter had drawn a picture of me with the back of my head at the computer. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like, okay, this is time now. <laughs> that something needs to change. And also, you know, I have to constantly remind myself of that because yeah. I do find myself sometimes slipping into yeah. the hours. But yes, it's good. Fabulous. So I think that's just a really incredible story, isn't it, to hear mm -hmm. that actually from 2000 to now, all the sort of turbulence that sometimes we have to go through. Um, but now, obviously, you've been really happy, you've still got that vision about where the business can still progress, where you can progress, and doing it, obviously, very happy as well. And that's, you know, sort of going back to 1999, when you were perhaps having those things where, you know... It's not very glamorous sleeping in a hotel room every night, was it? No. <laughs> and also, you know, a massive area to cover. Yeah, huge. Yeah. Yeah. really just been able to put that passion into your business I think and that, that really does come across you know having you know worked with you myself is you know that it's just you know been amazing as well for you to um, help me bring my vision yeah. alive you know and, and, I, and I love that and yeah. that's why I love working on, on yeah. projects because I care yeah and I want to do more of you know I do love to sleep sometimes over mm -hmm. but then I want to work with businesses that value the fact that yeah. I do work that closely and do yeah. understand the business yeah. so.